Hello and welcome back to Hinkley, Minnesota. This is the site of my very first supercharger review for the Now You Know channel's Tesla Time News and their supercharger review map. And that was way back in 2018. And now four years later and about 100,000 EV miles later, I'm back to talk about the state of EV charging, which is kind of in the news right now. So I wanted to talk a little bit about where the supercharger network is, where it's going, and where Electrify America is for CCS vehicles and where they're going and why I think Electrify America is kind of in the same position as Tesla was four years ago. Let's start out with superchargers. The network was built out out of necessity. Without a fast, convenient place to charge that was also reliable, no one was going to buy an electric car. To make their business work, they couldn't really wait for public charging to be fast and to grow organically. So it was kind of a chicken and egg situation, and Tesla built their proprietary plug, put out the supercharger network and started rolling. And that obviously made more people comfortable with choosing an electric vehicle, knowing you could travel up and down the coasts at first and then rolling out across the country and being able to cross the country all electric. But in late 2018 and 2019, the growth of the supercharger network really seemed to stall out. There were a lot of stations on the map that said coming by the end of the year, coming early next year, and they just kept getting pushed back and pushed back, and we didn't really know why. And then we learned about version 3 superchargers, and that some of the hesitation on new stations going in was to prepare for that upgrade. And for those of you who might not know, version 2 supercharger is what we have here in Hinkley, and the stations are labeled 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. And that's great, they can deliver 150 kilowatts at, at a max, but if people are on the same number, so somebody parks at 1A, somebody parks at 1B, they're gonna be sharing that 150 kilowatts. The big advancement with V3 charging was that each station got the full power, and that full power was bumped up to 250 kilowatts. So really maximized the throughput of vehicles and charge them each a little bit faster as well. It took a little while to roll the V3 stations out, so even after the announcement, some of these V2 stations were still installed here in Minnesota because the planning and process takes a little while. But once the switch was made, new installs of V3 chargers happened in Alexandria and across North Dakota, filling in some of those big interstate gaps. Now they're building superchargers that are prefab units that are pretty easy to deploy, like right here in St. Peter. And there's rumors of V4 charging, supercharging that will be coming either at the end of this year or early next year. We don't have a lot of details on that, but we know they'll be able to charge even faster and may be compatible with a CCS plug as well to welcome other vehicles onto this Tesla supercharger network. But speaking of CCS, let's talk about Electrify America. And they're not the only CCS network, but they're the largest, especially here in the Midwest, and they've been getting a lot of attention lately. So I wanna talk about where they are. Now, most people know that Electrify America was born out of Volkswagen's Dieselgate scandal, the emissions cheating where they were basically producing three times the allowable limit, and then when they'd hook it up to the testing equipment, it would make sure it seemed like everything was okay. Being born out of that, makes a lot of people question Electrify America's motives. But I do think the people at Electrify America do want to create a good public charging network, but their motives are kind of born out of a different model than what Tesla was, where their necessity was getting charges into the ground by the mandated dates and pulling hardware from wherever they could to get that job done. And that means some of that early hardware didn't quite work out and had to be replaced over the years. But their mandate was take this pile of money and turn it into an EV charging network. And they've done that. And the next step is expand it and make it profitable. But it's a business without the benefit of being formally attached to a car company. So it's not enough to be a loss leader because without the loss, there's nothing to support it. And they've also got the additional challenge of having to format to all sorts of CCS cars, not just the vertical integration stack that Tesla had. And that means a lot of software from all these manufacturers and the network had to learn to talk together. So that brings us up to now, where 
there's been a lot of new EVs on the road and a lot of people charging and some people having some pretty frustrating experiences on the Electrify America network this summer. And Out of Spec just did a terrific video on this topic and talked to a few different people and got some different perspectives. And they use the CCS network a lot more than I do, so I'll refer you to that for more details. And part of that video featured Brandon Flash from the EV Nomads channel, and his part of the discussion focused not only on the charging infrastructure, but on the hardware and some of the new hardware that should be coming to Electrify America in the next couple of years. There's some of it being deployed in Europe and we should be getting that upgraded equipment here soon. So new hardware coming with the promise of it being more reliable, which will hopefully put some of these issues to rest. So EA finds itself in a position similar to Tesla four years ago with big expansion plans, but permits for some of the old hardware still to go into the ground. So the optimist says that the issues with the network and the slow rollout of new stations is due to the supply chain issues over the last couple of years and waiting for that new hardware. The pessimist side would say that they don't really care about reliability. Once the station's in the ground, they've fulfilled their mandate. And if people can't charge, they don't really care. And that would mean that the delays in rolling out new stations are just them waiting for more federal money to become available with the new infrastructure law. But I have to imagine that the people working at Electrify America do want drivers to have a good, positive, reliable charging experience, even though they are trying to run a business solely off of charging. So it may feel like they're treading water a little bit, but I'm down here in Albert Lee where their second Minnesota station has just opened up a few weeks ago. And while I was writing this script in Worthington, just down the road, another station, Minnesota's third, has opened up. So progress is being made. Just a few months ago, this was the only EA station in Minnesota, and obviously then the only one in the Twin Cities metro area. Just like in 2018, where Tesla's only metro area supercharger was in Oakdale nearby. Tesla did have a few more stations outstate, but the growth has been incredible since they hit their stride about mid-2020. And now the major routes are covered, and they're filling in gaps in more rural areas and secondary routes. Now, permitting and construction takes time, so changes don't happen overnight. This station, not too far from the International Airport, has been under construction since May. But I see they now have a transformer, so hopefully it'll be opening soon. And more and more places are under construction, like here in North Branch. And this location in Egan, where the site has been permitted, but construction hasn't begun yet. And there are others under construction around the state. In 2018, it felt like we'd never get here, but looking back, it happened pretty fast, especially if you consider the last couple of crazy years. The next step will be opening up the supercharger network to CCS vehicles which is a problem that EA has already tackled. So we'll see how Tesla handles that challenge either later this year or in early 2023. But they've been doing pilot programs over in Europe and that seems to be going well. So we'll see how that translates. As for EA, I've got high hopes for the future, even though there does seem to be a bit of a rough patch now. With new hardware coming and more stations opening up all the time, hopefully they can expand and have a good, reliable network for users in the years to come. And with all the talk of networks and charging on the road, it's good to wrap this up with a reminder that most charging is done at home and charging overnight is plenty to get you through daily driving. Unless, of course, you're doing ridiculous videos like this and driving all over the place, chances are, you won't be doing road trips every day. But if you do, I hope you have a great experience no matter the network. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one.